you know, I think it's it, it like it did start off it started off just fine for Thunder here. I think the bottom lane went uh, went just fine for them. They were pretty happy with the result there. Uh, but this is this is really where it all went sideways for them, which is Lumiere yeah. never had a game. Uh, this Slark never got off the ground. It was basically 4v5 Dota the whole time. It, like, 4v5 while you're behind is just so difficult. Um, you know, they made great rotations here with the supports. I mean, it's, it was a bloodbath here in the middle lane for Thunder Awakened. This is one of the, or, uh, one of the few fights that they did win in this game. Because it was the last time that the Undying had an impact, though, unfortunately. <laughs> it's about nine minutes into the game. Yeah, it was just uh, all around the board. It was just such a frustrating game for Thunder, right? You mm -hmm. just showed anywhere and you were immediately uh, blinked upon by these two very tanky heroes. And then they just have all the support in the world on the back lines following them up. Yeah, and you can see here like the it's five to five, but it's a 3k lead already. It, 12 minutes into the game. Right. Like it, it wasn't just the kills and you can see there, there was that little mistake with the lion. Um, you know, my, that might be that synergy we talked about uh, earlier. You know, maybe a, a team that had played together more will know which one of them is going to finish off that kill uh, without having to talk about it in the moment. You know, and the other one can start on the start in on the other support. Man, this, look at the lion TP in behind on this one. That was so slick. I did not see that lion coming at all. Dude. Looks like he's going to get away, and then uh, bleh, <laughs> dead. And Malik just Malik kind of went nuts this game on the uh, on the Mars. Just see how sad the game is for Lumiere. Oh my goodness! And it's it's 20 minutes into the game and it's already out of control. Yeah. And that's what great teams will do, man. If you, they get a little advantage on on you, they they will put their foot down and not let you get any air in these games. And I think it's, you know, that's why I was saying, like, hey, you got to try something on Thunder Awaken. Right? And it was, I mean, I'm sure the game was already over at that point anyway. But, I mean, another example of Lumiere just not being able to have much of an impact here. Yeah. And uh, I feel like it's going to be quite the roller coaster ride as we relive this game number two. Yeah, starting out to 20 minutes already, which is going to show you, because it was a really sleepy beginning, remember? It felt like this game was forever because there was not much going on. And then all of a sudden, it just it popped off. You know, like, like we said, both here, both teams, this is where we saw, saw Oscar do this a couple times, where he just, he, I feel like he was really concentrating on creating chaos in the back line, and then just kind of lost track of where his team was, or maybe there's some miscommunication, and uh, he ended up getting isolated and, and taken down there. to get away from this chrono this face of void oh that was yeah i remember the big hoof stomp that was Dude, fun. Yes. that seems like it, it seems like two games ago that hoof stomp came out <laughs> these deuce of games man yeah yeah that and one this it, it really it felt like three different games in one even though we this didn't felt get like a game the turning three point to me. we had this three different games in one but yes this yeah. the the lumiere medusa he gets caught out here and brought down in quick order she just looked invincible up until this point, right? Yeah. Like, it's 31 minutes in the game. They just shot down that barracks, and, like, you were just like, uh-oh. You know, if you're, a, if you're a quest fan, you're thinking, oh, we, we might have waited too long, you know, and not gotten enough done or during her ramp-up period. But just the way they were able to bounce her around there despite the, the save attempts and all that. And then this is the, this is the follow-up fight right afterwards. It's the same story, man. Just bouncing around, not able to shoot at all. Chronosphere comes out. They were able to do all that without the Chronosphere. By the time she gets chronoed up, she's got no mana. So, like, you've lost all that advantage that you get from a hero. And, uh, yeah, I think that's when the, when the game really got busted open here. You know, we can see the cleanup kills in the aftermath of that. And then one more time, man. Lumi, this is... This was like, you know, this fight she got to, got to turn around and uh, put out some damage here. Starting to look like Medusa a little bit, but... You can see Oscar again isolated. The team's like not sure if they want to go in and help or not. You know, you get the illusions pumping out damage. I feel like the the Dark Mago Ember never had quite the impact that you were hoping to, but it was it was a really hard game for him. 
Yeah, it just just a rough day at the office for Thunder, man. It just really, it, it seems like uh, their plans didn't really get off the ground, and when they did, they just came crashing right back to the earth. So, yeah. it was like uh, it was like one of those contests where you see who can make the best homemade airplane. Okay, you know you, you know what I'm talking about. Sure. Where they just fly off the pier and they go as far as they can. The Spruce Goose? No, no it's, it's okay. Okay. All right, yeah. So you're saying like game one, it just like fell directly into the ocean? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Game two, at least it flew for a while there and then yeah. it caught a, caught a bad updraft. Uh, yeah, it, main, it maintained a altitude for a little while, but uh, it just unfortunately fell apart for him. The yeah. wings, man, they didn't, they didn't duct tape the wings.